establishing a permanent human presence on the moon and on Mars, a goal that is becoming more and more within reach with space agencies and private companies around the globe jumping on board. But one burning question lies ahead. How will we get there and back again? The most sought after material, as far as we know today, is oxygen. Uh, not necessarily to breathe, I mean, also to breathe, but uh, an average human being breathes something like uh, 200 to 250 kilograms of oxygen annually. Uh, but a uh, rocket uh, needs uh, much more. Future missions, such as NASA's Artemis program and SpaceX's ambitions for Mars, would see reusable spacecraft making round-trip journeys. Journeys, which would require more fuel than is feasible to carry on a launch from Earth. If we'll take as an example uh, SpaceX's Starship, according to known figures, when fully loaded with the weight of the rocket itself, propellant, cargo and everything is expected to weigh somewhere around 1,200 tons. And out of that weight, somewhere in the area of 800 tons is just oxygen. There is no way around it. If you want to do it for a long period of time, we must be able to get that oxygen on site and not bring it from Earth. Not only is it heavy, it's also expensive. That's where Helios comes in. This Israeli startup aims to solve the refueling issue by making oxygen on the surface of the moon and on Mars from regolith, or surface material, of the celestial bodies themselves. The lunar regolith is uh, comprised of approximately 40 to 45 percent oxygen by mass. And uh, the technology that we are developing uh, aims to extract that oxygen out of the lunar regolith. The technology is based around a process called molten regolith electrolysis. Lunar and Mars regolith are full of minerals formed from oxidized metals, such as iron, titanium, and aluminum. Since only a small sample of lunar material was brought to Earth during the Apollo missions, Helios uses simulated regolith, made to match the composition of real lunar regolith. So practically what we do, uh, we melt the lunar regolith at a very high temperature, uh, 1600 degrees Celsius and more, and then we electrolyze it with electrodes. And passing that current uh, splits the, the material, the metals sink down, the oxygen bubbles out, and we collect it. Molten regolith electrolysis has already been accomplished on a small scale in laboratory settings in the past and at the Helios lab. But Helios's concept goes bigger and addresses several variables for conditions off-world, such as operating in a vacuum, exposure to cosmic radiation, and finding energy-efficient ways to power the furnaces. Our research, our work, is on scaling up uh, that reactor, uh, developing a different set of electrodes, different reactor shape, geometry, materials that allows uh, the scale up of the process. We gave ourselves some sort of a, let's say, a benchmark to what we think should be a reasonable size uh, reactor that is commercially viable. Um, and that would be to be able to produce a thousand tons of oxygen a month. Helios has received the backing of the Israel Space Agency and Israel's Ministry of Energy and will be sending its technology into space on two missions in the next three years. Helios has also established a consortium with European companies to develop a holistic in-situ resource utilization system to cover various steps of the supply chain. There's a whole uh, value chain from the commute part, you know, transportation, getting from Earth to the moon, uh, deploying the system, um, having excavators that excavate uh, the regolith and uh, feed it to the reactor. After we extract oxygen, we need to store it somewhere. Uh, we need to uh, whether uh, use it on the lunar surface for refuel or uh, shipping it back to low Earth orbit to refuel uh, vehicles there. With Helios's technology, the vision of Earth-independent space exploration gets one step closer. Jesse Satin, I-24 News.